Yeah. I did. Uh-huh. Take over. Amen. So, uh, this is the, yeah. he, as he said before, this is the last installment of, uh, or did you say it was the last one? Yeah, last I think one, it's yeah. the last installment of uh, Uncomfortable Messages. Um, <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so we're going to end it on a, on a powerful note. We're, we're, right now we're going to talk about the spiritual aspects of, um, of counterfeit intimacy. And there's only one specific area of this that I know to speak of, and that is the Jezebel spirit, uh, the Jezebel spirit, also coming in, in with that, the Ahab spirit. They coincide one with the other. Um, I think all of us know uh, who Jezebel was, and if you don't know, Jezebel is a physical person found uh, between 1 Kings chapter 16, and her life ended in 2 Kings chapter 9 of Scripture, and she died a very violent death, and we'll get to that uh, momentarily. Um, she was the daughter of Ithel, Ithelbel, Ithelbel, a Phoenician given to King Ahab of uh, Israel. And one thing I want to say is that uh, there was only one man, one, one king of Israel who conquered more land and conquered more for the kingdom of Israel than Ahab did, and that was Solomon. And Solomon was David's son, and the only one to conquer less than Ahab was David. Um, so it, it's, uh, King Ahab's a big deal. And, and when, what we'll find a later on in Scripture is that King Ahab was very, uh, very pitiful. He was a very pitiful king. As a matter of fact, uh, we'll get to this momentarily as well. But something happens to him, and he literally goes home. He puts his face against the wall, lays down in, lays down in bed, and sticks his tongue out and cries because he didn't get what he wanted. And this man's a king. Um, and, and so we'll see that later on in Scripture. So to, today I want to tell you six ways to identify uh, the Spirit of Jezebel. Also, if you get angry while I'm preaching this message, it, your, your lives are dealing with the Spirit of Jezebel as well. So uh, the, the first one, I'm just going to tell, tell you, the, the, the first one is insecurity. The second one is rejection. And, and, and if you're not writing any of this down, you, you really need to. Because uh, we all have dealt with this in some way, in some form. The third one is pride. The fourth one is arrogance. The fifth one is manipulation. And the sixth one is control. And so right now, I, I want to give you a story, a scripture, the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. And I want to show you how the spirit of Jezebel manifested itself before Jezebel even existed and before it even had, before it even had a name. So if you have your word, turn me to, uh, to, to Genesis chapter 39, uh, verse 1. When Joseph was taken to Egypt by the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer. Potiphar was certain of the guard, was captain of the guard for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord was, was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the, in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realized that, that the Lord was with Joseph giving him success in everything he did. This pleased Potiphar, so he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he, he owned. How, how many of y'all trust someone so much, besides your wife or significant other, that you would put them in charge of, it, of everything you own? This complete stranger, you trust somebody besides your significant other, this complete stranger that you would put in her, your, your mom? Okay, okay. okay. Your, your mom. You didn't specify. <laughs> yes, my mother. That's all. Awesome. That's all. Awesome. I would not trust my mom with a no bullshit. Hey. So, uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're on Facebook Live, dude. She understands. <laughs> she, she wouldn't trust me with a with a no bullshit. This pleased Potiphar, so he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. Hey, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it when, when, when I get home. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he 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 owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household. And property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar for, for Joseph's sake. All his household affairs ran smoothly, and his crops and livestock flourished. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he didn't worry about a thing except what kind of food to eat. This man only had to worry about steak or pork chops. That, that, that's it. Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man. I want to stop there before we get to the, uh, to the seventh verse. And I want to tell y'all about a, a dream I had uh, Friday night. So in, in this dream, I'm laying in bed. And this is weird. 
Um, I don't know if it was a bear or a really cute dog, but it, it was. But it, whatever it was, it was incredibly adorable. It was so adorable and so attractive that I started to cry looking at it. That's how beautiful this was. This was a dream, guys. This didn't happen. So. Um, if you didn't hear me before, this is a dream, okay? So this thing is so adorable, it's so attractive that I began to cry and weep. And, as, and, and I began to look at this thing, and, and I began to cry harder. And then it, it, it got up on my shoulder and started to whisper names of pornographic actors in my ear. And I woke up weeping and crying. If y'all don't understand how demonic that is, uh, I mean, I'm just going to tell you, that's very, that's very demonic. And... And so Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man. And Potiphar's wife soon began to, to look at him lustfully. Come and sleep with me, she demanded. So automatically, we see control. She demanded and tried to control him for him to come and sleep with her. Uh, control is aspect, as I said before, of the Jezebel spirit. But Joseph refused. Look, he, he, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. Look at verse 10. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day, but he refused to sleep with her and kept out of her way as much as possible. Why? Because he rejected her originally. In her arrogance, in her pride, she got angry at his rejection and so continued to try to manipulate and control. The spirit of Jezebel, if you try, if, if you reject it without expelling it, you will only make it worse on yourself. You cannot play with this thing. However, no one, one, one day, however, when no one else was around, when he went in to do his work, she came and grabbed him by his cloak, demanding, come on, sleep with me. G Joseph tore himself away, but he left his cloak in her hand as she ran from the house. When she saw that she was holding his cloak he, and he had fled, she called out to her servants. Soon all the men came running. Look, she said, my husband has brought this Hebrew slave here to make fools of us. He came into my room to rape me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream, he ran outside and got away, but he left his cloak behind me. She kept the cloak with her until her husband had came home. Then she told him her story. That Hebrew slave you brought into our house tried to come in and fool around me, she said. But when I screamed, he ran outside, leaving his cloak with me. So what is that? That is, man that is manipulation. We have in... 18 verses covered everything that we see the spirit of Jezebel do. Also, this is the this is the this is the this is the round point I want to make. Also, many times we act in this spirit and we never realize it. Many times we try to hold on to things just as Potiphar held on to Joseph's robe that we need to let go of, and thus opening a door to the spirit of Jezebel. I've never heard anybody put it that way. I'm pretty proud of myself. Uh, I, I was walking through work one day, and God brought this to me, and, and He said, think about this. And I thought about it, and I said, that's really good, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so if you have things in your life that, that, that you allow to be open, that you allow to be un, un, undealt with, it will allow you to be susceptible to the spirit of Jezebel and of Ahab. Okay, so how do we, so, so, so we, we may see these things and we may not realize that it's a, it's a spirit. So I have five things here that I, I want to I share with you that, that prove that it's, it's a spirit. For one, if you have somebody in, in your family, if there's somebody around you and you just keep getting this feeling up about them and you want to go talk to them, to, to them about it and you feel fear about talking to that person, that is more than likely the spirit of Jezebel. Why? Because in 2 Timothy verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So automatically we understand that fear is not of God. And so if you feel fear, what's that of? Satan. Amen. Satan. It's of hell. It, it, it's of sin. Secondly is isolation. If you have your scripture, turn to 1 King, Kings chapter 19, verses 1. We're going to go to verse, to verse uh, 7. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of, of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the gods strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. 
He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he went home. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I have, I have had enough, Lord. He said, "Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died." Okay, so for one, I want you to let me set let me set the scene here. For a second, Elijah just killed like 800 something prophets. Okay, Elijah just called fire down from heaven. Okay, Elijah just did this awesome miracle, right? And then automatically, when when this when Jezebel says, "I'm I'm going to kill you," he immediately isolates himself. He immediately gets away from some from from every. Body else. Let me let me just help you out with this. Solitude and isolation are two completely separate things. Okay, even Jesus had to get away for a while. But when you feel like you just want to get away from absolutely everybody and never talk to anybody ever again, even the people that have been there for you since day one, and you feel like you just don't want to talk to anybody, you want to isolate yourself, that could be and probably is the spirit of the spirit of Jezebel. The third one is problems sleeping. Look at, uh, look at verse 5. It says, Then he laid down and slept under the broom tree, but as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there beside him his head was bread baked on, on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Okay, why did he, so he was so exhausted that he had just enough energy to get up, to drink something, to eat, and then pass back out. Why was he so exhausted? Because he had been dealing with the spirit of Jezebel and Ahab. When you deal with when when, when you deal with this, you're going to lose sleep. Okay? For the past couple weeks, I've been getting like four hours of sleep at a time. I'm up 15 hours a day. Okay, with four hours of sleep, that makes me not a good human being. Okay, that makes me very, very lazy, and, that, and that, 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 that makes me not want to do anything. And why is that? I've been dealing with the spirit of Jezebel for, Lord, since I was introduced to sex at six years old. Okay, I have had to identify this area in my life for, for a long time. I made the statement that, you know, if I wasn't addicted to pornography and sex, I would be a very good Christian. Okay. Well, well if, I, if I had confessed that to, to, to a brother with some sense, he, he would have said, no, if you didn't commit to porn and sex, you would be a very good Christian. If you, if you wanted to be a good Christian, you would be a, 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 a good Christian. And so the point I want to make with that is that when you find an area in, in your life that is weak, you need to find an area in the Scriptures that can strengthen that area. Amen. That's the point that I, 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 I want to make. With that and so if you have problems sleeping uh, it could be and along with these other things it could be the spirit of Jezebel in your life uh, the fourth one is depression we see that also where he, where he said take my life for I'm no better than my ancestors who have already died and uh, number five is uh, is sexually impure thoughts if you cannot look at a male or female and think to yourself and I really want to sleep with that person you might I don't know, uh, you might be dealing with the spirit of Jezebel according to Scripture. Okay, so we, we, we've identified the spirit, we've seen the symptoms, we, we, we've seen what it can do. Uh, let's talk about how you deal with it. So turn me to Ezra uh, chapter uh, 9. We're going to see how the Israelites dealt with pagan wives that they were not permitted to marry. So in verse 9 of chapter 9, we're going to jump right into the middle of Ezra's prayer as he's repenting for the kingdom to God. It says, For we were slaves, but in his unfailing love... Oh, let me go back real quick. Let's go back to... Uh, I forgot to make this, this point. Let's go back to, uh, to, 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 to 1 Kings uh, chapter... Um, where he was? 19. 19, yeah. Sorry, chapter 18, verse 22. Uh, this was right before Elijah um, killed the 800-something prophets of Baal. It says, Then Elijah said to them, I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Uh, Elijah in this moment was already feeling isolated. Okay, um, Elijah actually was not the last prophet. At the time of Elijah, there was other prophets. 
Okay, so Elijah, before he committed this act, was already feeling isolated. He was already feeling alone. And I, this is the point I, I want to make, and then we'll get on to Ezra. You can be dealing with this spirit and still be operating in your gifts. You can be dealing with your spirit and still be a Christian. You can be dealing with this spirit and, and, and still be operating in what God has called you to operate to. Okay, so let's go to Ezra. Chapter 9. For we were slaves, but in his unfailing love, our God did not abandon us in our slavery. Instead, he caused the kings of Persia to treat us favorably. He revived us so we could rebuild the temple of our God and repair its ruins. He has given us a protective wall in Judah and Jerusalem. And now, O oh our God, what can we say after all of this? For once again, we have abandoned your commands. Your, your servants, the prophets, warned us when, when they said, The land you are entering to possess is totally defiled by, by the detestable practices of the people living there from, from one end to, to the other. The land is filled with corruption. Don't let your daughters marry their sons. Don't take their daughters as wives for your sons. Don't ever promote the peace and prosperity of, the, of, of those nations. If you follow these instructions, you will be strong and will enjoy the good things the land produces. And you will leave, and you, and you will leave this prosperity to your children forever. So all they had to do was, was not marry somebody. All they had to do was just not marry somebody. And they would have had prosperity. But we see, we see that they can do it. In uh, chapter 10, we're going to go from, from, from uh, verse 1 to 16. While Ezra prayed and made this confession, weeping and lying face down on the ground, he was prostrate before God in front of the temple of God. A very large crowd of people from, from, from Israel, men, women, and children, gathered and wept bitterly with him. Let, let, let me just make to this point. When, when a righteous man calls unto God, it's no shocker when people start to, start to, to join him. Then Shechaniah, son of Jehiel, a descendant of Elam, said to Ezra, We have been unfaithful to our God, for we have married these pagan women of the land. But in spite of this, there is hope for Israel. Let us now make a covenant with our God to divorce our pagan wives and send them away with their children. We will follow the advice given by you and by, and by the others who respect the commands of our God. Let it be done according to the law of God. Get up, for it is your duty to tell us how to proceed in setting things straight. We are behind you, so be strong and take action. So Ezra stood up and demanded that the leaders of the priests and Levites, all the people of Israel, swear that, that they would do as Shechaniah had, had said, and they all swore a solemn oath. And then Ezra left the front of the temple of God and went to the room of Je Je Jehoanan, son of Eliashib. He spent the night he spent the night there without eating or drinking anything. He was still in the morning. He, he was still in mourning because of the unfaithfulness of the returned exiles. Then a proclamation was made throughout Judah and Jerusalem that all the exiles should come to Jerusalem. Those who failed to come within three days, what if the, the leaders and elders so decided forfeit all their property and be expelled from assembly of the exiles? Within three days, all the people of Judah and, ben, and Benjamin had gathered in Jerusalem. This took place on December 19th. And all the people were sitting in the square before the temple of God. They were trembling both because of the seriousness of the matter and because it was raining. Then Ezra the priest stood. Now this make that point right there. Right there. Ezra was the priest. Stood and said to them, You have committed a terrible sin by, by, by marrying pagan women. You have increased Israel's guilt, so now confess your sin to the Lord, the God of your, of your ancestors, and do what he did. The man separate yourselves from the people of the, the of the land and from these pagan women. Then the whole assembly raised their voices and answered, "Yes, you are right. We must do as you say." Then they added, "This isn't something that can be done in a day or two. For many of us are, are involved in this extremely sinful affair, and this is the and this is the rainy season. So we cannot stay out here much longer. Let our leaders act on behalf of us all. And everyone who has a pagan wife come at a scheduled time, accompanied by the leaders and judges of." city so that the fierce anger of our God concerning this affair may be turned away from us. And only Jonathan, son of Eshel, and Jazeah, son of Tikva, opposed the course of this action, and they were supported by Meshulam and Shabbatai, uh, Shabbatai the, the Levi. So this was the plan they followed. Ezra, this is another point to make, Ezra selected leaders to represent their families, designating each other as the representatives 
by name. On December 29th, the leaders sat down to investigate the, the matter. By March 27th, the first day of the new year, they had finished dealing with all the men who had married pagan wives. And so I'll read all that to make my point here, is that just like when Abraham and had to send Ishmael out, he, he didn't just kick her out of his teeth. Okay, he sent her off with with blessing, and he sent her off uh, with, with, with 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 prayer. He loved Ishmael, and he loved Hagar. Uh, Ishmael, Ishmael was his son, which is the father of Islam, and so he loved them. But he understood that 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 this was something between him and his wife and God, and that and that he had brought somebody in that was not supposed to be there. And so this is the point I want to make with that, is that uh, a lot of times we find ourselves in relationships uh, where we fornicate and we, and we adulterate and we allow ourselves, the, we allow the spirits of Jezebel and, and Ahab to come in to the relationship. We allow people to, to we allow people to bring the, the, the spirit of Jezebel in our lives uh, w w with them. And so I, I want to say that um, it's okay to treat people with grace, but when it comes to the spirit of Jezebel, you cannot have any mercy. When it comes to this demonic entity, you cannot have any mercy. You have to be violent with this demon. So uh, we, have a, we have leaders that they appointed. We have a priest in, in Ezra, and if you read 2 Kings uh, verse 9, we, uh, chapter 9, we, we, we have a prophet in Jehu. Um, and so, what does that mean? Well, Jesus Christ is our king, he is our priest, and he is our prophet. And so, I want to say that you cannot handle this spirit without Jesus. Unless you are willing to change, and you are willing to, to seek salvation, and you are willing to seek forgiveness, and you really want to expel this spirit out of your life, you cannot do that without Jesus Christ. Turn me to Revelation uh, chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. Verse 18 to, to 29, my apologies. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Thyatira. This is the message from the Son of God, whose eyes are like flames of fire, whose feet are like polished bronze. I know all the things you do. I have seen your love, your faith, your service, your patient endurance, and I can see your constant improvement in all of these, these things. So he, he, he says that I see all these things you're doing for me. I see all these great works. I see how much you love me. I see how much you believe in me. But in verse 20, he says, but I have this complaint against you. You are permitting that woman, that Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. Now that only further uh, installs the point that I made about Elijah being able to operate, but still dealing with the spirit. You are permitting her. That doesn't mean that she's controlling you. You are allowing her into your life to lead my servants astray. She teaches them to commit sexual sin and to eat food offered to, to to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to turn away from her immorality. Therefore, I will throw her on a bed of suffering, and those who commit adultery with her will suffer greatly unless they repent and turn away from her evil deeds. I will strike her children dead, then all the churches will know that I am the one who searches out the thoughts and intentions of, of every person, and I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. But I also have, have a message for the rest of you in Thyatira, who have not followed this false teaching. I will ask nothing more of you except that you hold tightly to what you have until I come. To so all who are victorious, who obey me to the very end, to them I will give authority over all nations. They will rule the nations with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. They will have the same authority I received from my Father, and I will also give them the morning star. And anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what He is saying to the churches. So let me just let me just help you with this. If you have dealt with this Spirit, that doesn't mean you're going to miss out with this. Okay? Through Jesus Christ, you are justified and you are forgiven of all sin. And, and now you have the ability and opportunity to receive of the, uh, uh, of the Spirit and presence of, 
of God. Let, let, let me just give you something that's, um, that's absolutely astounding. So uh, when, when you're saved, you are automatically above the law. And that doesn't mean go out and commit murder. That doesn't mean go out and, and, and speed. That doesn't mean any, any of that. That means that you are automatically above what the law says. So the, the, the law would say, this is about to get really uncomfortable. The, the law would say that I am uh, no longer a, a virgin, but I'm saved through Christ and I have justification th th through Christ and I have redemption through Christ. And so what Christ says is I have come through you and I have spiritually made you sexually pure and I have made you whole. Let me, let, let me get you to understand this. When you deal with this spirit, you deal with this broken spirit, it is a weak spirit if you want it to be. But, it will, but when you allow it to have control over you, when you allow it to dictate your life, it becomes a strong spirit. When you want to watch pornography and it's whispering in your ear, it is attempting to control you. So let me tell you this. This is how you deal with that spirit. Turn in your word to 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30. Now I'm going I'm to show you, our scripture, scripture is going to show you how to deal with this demonic spirit. When Jezebel, the queen mother, heard that Jehu had come to, to, to Jezreel, she painted her, her eyelids, fixed her hair, and sat at a window. So she put on her makeup, she got her hair did, okay, and she was preparing for Jehu. She was preparing for this. She was arrogant, she was prideful, and automatically she attempted to manipulate him. When Jehu entered the gate of the palace, she shouted at him, Have you come in peace, you murderer? Well, automatically she knows he's not coming in peace because she said he's coming in peace, you murderer. I, th I, th I think that's, that's funny because I'm just weird. You're just like Zimri who murdered his master. Jehu looked up, saw her at the window, and shouted, Who is on my side? And two or three eunuchs looked out at him. Throw her down, Je Jehu yelled. So they threw her out of the window. Her blood splattered against the wall and on the horse. So as soon as she hit the ground, um, she exploded. <laughs> And Jehu trampled her body. Listen to this. Jehu trampled her body under his horse's hoofs as if her falling wasn't enough. As if, as if she literally going splat wasn't enough. He wanted to make sure that it was done. And listen to this part. Then Jehu went into the palace, ate, and drank. This man is Jezebel killer by day, sandwich eating beer drinker by night. This is a serious man. He killed Jehu and went and had a sandwich and a beer. This man didn't care. Afterward, he said, someone go and bury... Of course, they didn't have a beer. Don't get all religious on me. Someone go and bury this cursed woman, for she is the daughter of a king. But when they went out and to bury her, they found only her skull, her feet, and her hands. And when they returned to Jehu, he stated, This fulfills the message from the Lord, which he spoke through his servant Elijah from Tishbe at the plot of the land in Jezreel. Dogs will eat Jezebel's body. Her remains will be scattered like dung on the plot of land in Jezreel so that no one will be able to recognize her. Okay? So you don't get what I'm saying when I say that Jezebel, ha Jezebel has to die a violent death, right? Amen. Okay. So you cannot have any mercy when dealing with this spirit in your life. You cannot have any mercy. You cannot think about it. You just have to do it. When, um, when I realized that a relationship that I, that I was in was being dictated by the spirit of Jezebel, I automatically said, okay, how do I want to deal with this? And I went to a scripture and I said, I want to do two things. I want to allow us to repent. Okay, and I want to go through a process where everything we, that we do is vertical. There's no cuddling. We don't kiss for longer than three seconds. And we operate in a spiritual purity. And we operate as God has, has, has deemed us to operate. See, dating doesn't exist in, in Scripture. Okay, I was, if I lived in this time period, I was given a wife. Okay, I, I, I mean, I really didn't, didn't have a choice. If, if I was a Jew in, in this time period, when I turned 18... I was given a wife, okay? And so there was no dating, okay? And, 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 and I was only married to her at the time that I had sex with her and consummated the marriage. 
But in today's society, we have the pleasure of figuring out who we're dealing with. In today's society, we have the pleasure of figuring out whether or not we want to be with that person for the rest of our lives. In today's society, we have it much easier than the way that they did. So I want to say this once again. If you're dealing with somebody or you're dealing with yourself, okay, Jesus has grace for you, okay? Jesus has grace for that person, okay? But you cannot allow the Spirit to dictate your life, okay? You cannot allow the Spirit. You, scripture says that you have permitted it. You, will, you have allowed it. If you have to smash a cell phone, a laptop, if you have to cut some people off, cut some people off. If they are not willing to repent, they should not be close to you. You cannot be friends with somebody that is not willing to be coachable and teachable. Okay? I don't have any friends that I cannot look at them and say, bro, that's jacked up. Okay? And I don't want to be around somebody that doesn't want to look at me and say, bro, you're jacked up. Okay? So I'm going to pray. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm going to pray. And if you feel like this is something that you're dealing with, if you feel like you want to totally get rid of your, 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 your point of addiction, if you want to expel this from your life, I want to give you the opportunity. Heavenly Father, God, I ask you, Lord, that, that right now that you are setting this on hearts, Lord. Father God, that your spirit is moving through your people. Heavenly Father God, I rebuke the spirit of Jezebel. I curse you with a curse. I command you to flee from this people. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You have no power. You have no control. You have no authority. You cannot be here. And I rebuke you and I command you to flee. Heavenly Father God, I ask you in Jesus' name. Father God, that, that, that if there is one dealing with this, Father God, that they would come forward. And Father God, that we can expel this demonic entity from their lifestyle. Father God, that we can expel this. Heavenly Father God, that we can counsel them through this. Heavenly Father God, that we can work them through this. Father God, I want to give you praise. I want to give you the honor for the ability to speak your word, to preach your word, to teach your word. And Father God, I ask you that you go forth from here, Father. Father God, if... It, it, if somebody's dealing with it and has not come up, Father, I want you to, to, to follow them home, Lord. And I want you to, to, to allow them to, to deal with it there. Heavenly Father, God, I ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.